Hey guys, my name's Jamin. Thanks so much for visiting my channel. In this video, I have an Asus VivoBook 16. This is going to be the X1605 models. I'm going to take you on a simple teardown or disassembly tour, show you how to open the computer up and the various components you can access. So first thing guys, power down your computer the correct way. Make sure it's off and unplugged from your charger. We're then going to go to the bottom case where we can take out your screws. So as you see here, you've got four screws along this bottom edge. You've got two screws here, two screws here, and two screws in the middle, giving you a total of 10 screws. After all those screws are removed, you're going to take a small, flat, preferably plastic pry tool. I say plastic because they tend to scratch your cases a little less than metal ones do. But you're going to take it and go around the outside edge, the seam, between the bottom case and the palm rest, and gently but firmly pry the bottom case off from your computer. Now don't put the pry tool too far in. You could damage some internal components. Keep it on the edge. And if you get stuck in, in one place, leave it. Go to the other edge and work your way around in the other direction. This one wasn't too difficult to take off, just so you're aware. After you get your bottom case off, this is what you're looking at for the inside of your computer. Now as a quick side point with computer repair guys, whenever I'm working on a computer in my shop, it's sitting on an anti-static mat. Either that or an anti-static bracelet are great ideas to avoid damaging things in your computer when you're working on them. If you need any help with any tools or supplies for your computer projects, there'll be a link above, also below in the description, to the tools and supplies that I would use on this model computer, as well as all the replacement and upgrade parts for this specific model of VivoBook. Now, one thing I do before touching anything in a computer, guys, I either remove or at least unplug the battery. A computer is safer to work on when as little power as possible is running through it. So here's your battery right here along the bottom. To get this battery up, there's four screws and it's plugged into the motherboard right here. Now, if you see in, in your plug, guys, there's a metal part right on top that holds down the plastic plug. So to get this off, you're gonna slide that metal part up to free this up and then you can snap that right off, up and off of your motherboard to get that battery out. For those of you looking for your own battery replacement, this is a 42 watt hour battery, 11.55 volt, and the ASUS battery model number was C31N2201. I'll have that information below in the description. I'll also include a couple battery replacement options in that link below in the description that I told you about with all the parts and tools. Now that your battery has been removed or at least unplugged, it's safe to proceed deeper into the computer. This is your solid state drive right here. You have a single M.2 port right there, kind of at a little crooked weird angle underneath your fan, and it screws into the case right here. So you would undo that single screw, it would free up your solid state drive, then you can pull it out of this M.2 port here. The Gen 3 or Gen 4 solid state drives are supported in this computer. And I think stock, most of you will have a one terabyte solid state drive. So below in the description in that link with all the upgrade and replacement parts for this computer, uh, I'll try to have a one terabyte and a two terabyte upgrade option for both Gen 3 and Gen 4 solid state drives for you guys to choose. And as a last side note with this type of replacement, when you do install a new solid state drive, you're gonna have to install an operating system onto that in order to use your computer. So below in the description, I will also have two video links. One will show you how to install Windows 10 and one will show you how to install Windows 11 depending on which one you guys wanna do. The next part I'll shout out here is your RAM. You have a single RAM port right there for one stick of RAM that can be added. Uh, most of you guys, you'll have eight gigabytes of DDR4 memory integrated into your motherboard already. And since this computer maxes out at 24 gigabytes total, that leaves you a possible 16 gigabyte max that you can have a stick in here for. So the way to operate this RAM, guys, there's a spring-loaded arm on either side. To get the RAM out, you would gently pry these arms apart from each other, away from the RAM stick. The RAM stick releases. In most cases, it even pops up a little bit, and then you can slide it to the left out of this port. To get the RAM back in, there's a long part of the port here and a short part, so you can only get that RAM in the correct way. You can't put it in upside down. You would put it in there, make sure it's flush, make sure this gold line here is nice and straight, 
and then you'd press in the middle here, these arms would latch onto it and secure it in place. Now this RAM, again, I mentioned it's DDR4, uh, 3200 sodium. Uh, the RAM stick that was in this computer was PC4-25600. I will include a couple RAM upgrade options in that link below in the description. I'll try to have an eight gigabyte stick. If you guys, you know, don't want to spend a lot, you just want to add a little bit of RAM. I'll also include a 16 gigabyte stick if you guys want to max out your RAM. And I always say, if you're looking for performance, RAM is a very cheap, very easy upgrade you can do uh, that heavily influences the speed of, of your computer. So if nothing else, guys, I always recommend maxing out your RAM in any computer. Next thing I'll shout out here is your Wi-Fi card right here in the middle near your fan. It's kind of like the solid state drive as in you have a single screw right there. So you would take that single screw up, the Wi-Fi card would be released, but you also have these antenna wire, this black and white antenna wire that run down through the fan, down here to this antenna, and then over here to this antenna. So you have to unsnap those. They pop straight up and out of the computer. They're just snaps. And then to get them back on, you would need to get them at an exact 90 degree angle and then apply some pressure to snap those back on. If they're not at a perfect 90 degree angle and you push too hard, you can damage them. Uh, so it may take a little bit. If you're not used to it, you may have to just spend some time on it, try to get it perfect, but those do snap back on. Uh, also, the Wi-Fi card, this is a 6E Intel model number 8X201 uh, Bluetooth 5.3 card. Again, I'll have that information below in the description, and I'll try to have some replacement options below in that link for your Wi-Fi card. The next thing I'll shout out is your speakers. You have this one right here on the right of my screen and this one here on the left of my screen. So they connect down bottom here right alongside your antenna wire on the bottom of your touchpad, and then they plug into the motherboard right here. Now these speakers are not screwed in. You see these yellow rubber washers that go alongside these two posts on either speaker for sound insulation. You can just wiggle those right off of those posts and they come out. Unfortunately, the way this is plugged in, I always recommend not pulling on the wires if, if you can help it, but this was very difficult to get out. It doesn't have any grips on either side of that plug. So I did have to grab the plug and the wires together and gently so, sort of wiggle that out. So be careful uh, pulling on those wires there. Um, next thing, as mentioned, your antenna are, are down here. Uh, those are held on by double-sided tape. So you can just peel those off if you're looking to replace your actual antenna. Uh, this is your keyboard ribbon cable here that plugs into the motherboard. Um, this type of cable connector is very fragile. I'll, I'll, I'll shout that out along with this one here going in into your touchpad. Um, if you're looking to get your touchpad out, you would undo these two screws and then you would need to go at this ribbon cable here. These type of connectors, this one here for the touchpad, this one here for the keyboard, and then other ones here, uh, you'll see these all, all over computers, very fragile, very breakable. The way to operate these, you see a black clip. It's a movable clip and it opens and shuts like a book cover. So it opens from this bottom side here and the hinges are on the top side here. So be very careful. The way you would operate this is a small, very flat pry tool. Slide it underneath the black clip from this direction from the bottom. And then you would gently pop that black clip up again. It'll open like a book cover. So this side will open. The top side will stay down and then you can get the ribbon cable out. But if you do break that black clip, you're probably not gonna be able to find a replacement, which means your ribbon cable won't connect down securely. So again, be very careful when operating these type of clips. Uh, next thing, this is your LCD cable up here that comes in from this hinge assembly. There's a sticker here with this label on it. You would gently peel that sticker up, but don't rip it off. You could damage your cable. And after you get that up, you should be able to push this up out of that port. And I guess the last thing to shout out here is your big uh, heat sink assembly and fan. There's a couple screws in the fan right here, but before taking your fan up, again, keep in mind these antenna wire here that we mentioned, they run through the fan. So be very careful, unrun those wires first. It may be a good idea to uh, unsnap them from your Wi-Fi card uh, to get those out. And then your fan plugs into the motherboard right here. 
Unlike the speakers, this plug has a grip on either side. So you can use your fingernails or a pry tool to pry that out without pulling on that wire. And then you can get your fan up. As a side note with the heat sink and fan assembly, if you're here to clean it out, maybe you're having overheating issues, I will have a video link above, also below in the description on how to deal with an overheating computer, which would involve removing your fan, cleaning it out, removing your heat sink assembly, cleaning it out, and reapplying thermal paste. Um, the way to get this heat sink up, you have a screw here, a screw here and here, and then one down here. That gets up your heat sink as well as these four screws over the CPU. And then again, if you wanted a tutorial and how to apply thermal paste, it'll be below in that link uh, showing you how to deal with an overheating computer. You want to clean all the old thermal paste off. You don't want to put new stuff on top of old stuff. And then you don't want to put too much new thermal paste down. It could have a reverse effect if you put too much. So that's how you would address this computer. That's how you would get inside. And that's how you would access a majority of the main components that you can see here. So that's the video, guys. I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, check out the FAQs below in the description. It could save you some time getting an answer. If you do need to leave me a question or comment, please do. I do try to get to those a couple times a day at least. To support the channel, please remember to like and share, subscribe if you enjoy this type of DIY tutorials, and for those of you that want to support the channel a little further, you can always leave a small donation, and there's a couple ways to do that. First, right below the video to the right hand side, you'll see the super thanks button. You can click on that. You can select a tip amount here. Second way, you can use your cash app, find me at dollar sign PC helper. You can leave a dollar amount and you can even leave a little note. So thank you so much for watching guys and I look forward to seeing you on my next video.